All right, welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I just stamped out and had a great time doing. Um, as I say in the video, it was kind of inspired by or influenced by uh, the movie Maleficent. I love the the movie, the tonal quality of the uh, the art direction, and a lot of the landscapes there. A lot of them are very bright and uh, vibrant and colorful, but there's also a, kind of a sequence where they're kind of the scenes are more kind of somber and very atmospheric with uh, some kind of like enchanted little elements going on. In a couple of the vi recent videos that I've done, I've had these little glowing, you know, spheres of light and I've uh, again added them into um, this scene right here. Um, some of the uh, sequences that I really enjoy in the movie are just kind of like if you look in there there's kind of branches up in the corners you know everything's very thick you know in terms of vegetation but um, in the scene right here you know I have some, like this moonlight coming through and how they're affecting kind of the branches around in there um, this scene is a it's a half page scene it's an eight and a half by five and a half inch um, scene so half page um, going like this way, okay? But anyways, um, the composition itself is fairly simplistic. I mean, these rocks right here have been stamped four times, just certain portions of them. A lot of these rock, uh, tiny rocks, you know, within the water right here, kind of creating a little bit of a, a stage for this little figurine right here. I'll get to the figurine in a bit. And just a lot of different branches kind of coming in from the sides, um, different branches um, stamped in different values. And then just a real, you know, uh, simplistic tonal um, quality to the, uh, the background colors, just in terms of greens with a little bit of an element of uh, green. And then finally, the uh, this little stamp right here, this little figurine right here is a stamp that I don't know how long it's been in my collection, but it's uh, stamped by this company called Abracadata. Uh, company is no longer around. I don't know if those images are in other catalogs or not, but I mean, you can stamp up some kind of a little, you know, creature down there, or leave it blank if you want to, but I just thought that this scene right here kind of I thought about the scene first, then I looked in my collection, I saw this little element right here, so I didn't just build everything around that little figurine, although I could have. But um, anyways, like these little fairies right there, it's probably some little um, old engraving or something like that that's been used in stamps. This company hasn't been around for quite some time. Um, but you'll still find those companies with a lot of those types of uh, little images like that. But anyways, I thought she'd be a perfect little element in here in the movie. There's a lot of little fairies kind of flying around everywhere, kind of along the surface of the water. And when I found this image, you know, I really thought about this little fairy kind of dancing on, a, you know, the water's surface. So um, I kind of created this little pond here with that little um, kind of a cluster of rocks. And again, it's the same rock stamp to stamp several times like that. Okay. And uh, the part that I really enjoyed doing, I mean, I enjoy stamping on scenes like that, but um, how it all came together for me, and I really didn't think about this until I got into it, um, but she had to be a different color from the background, but just having that little dress in there um, with that little violet pinkish um, tone uh, stood out a little bit too much, so... Um, I had this set of Sharpie paint pens, okay, and one of them was pink, and uh, I thought, okay, we needed to kind of incorporate her into the, uh, the landscape a little bit more, so um, hopefully on this video you can see that some of these little dots are a little bit of that kind of more pastel pink right in there. So I kind of created that light emanating from her, or being created by her, and relating to her by the use of, of that same hue, being pink, okay? If I did it too bright, like this pink right here, 
Uh, this looks like orange uh, on the video screen, but in reality it's really more pink. Or say something like this. It, this looks more red actually now, but anyways, those I think would have been too bright, so kind of this pastelish color. And then again, diffused with a little bit of the uh, color box pigment, it kind of worked out great. And I like how that light kind of emanates in here uh, from her, and it kind of brought the scene to life, I thought. And uh, it was the, I don't know, the, I don't know, the, uh, the final element that I thought kind of uh, finished off the scene really nicely. And um, just I really enjoyed it when uh, it all came together like that. A little bit of a, I'm glad I had a little bit of a pink uh, matte paper. You just see this really thin little line of it, but that kind of brings out the uh, those little pink elements in there a little bit more too. So anyways, uh, this goes into a pretty long uh, segment here in terms of the uh, creation of this scene, but uh, if you choose to watch it, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, as much as I enjoyed creating it. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Okay, this scene is going to be done on a half sheet of paper, um, eight and a half by five and a half inches, and I'm going to do this in a vertical format here. This scene is going to be kind of, uh, I would say, inspired by uh, the current movie out right now called Maleficent. And um, I saw that movie and uh, really enjoyed it, but uh, the I found the art direction in it to be really, uh, really spectacular in terms of the, uh, the background scenes and sets that they had. I have a feeling that they were probably a combination of... Uh, live sets and uh, kind of uh, digitally enhanced, you know, with some additional backgrounds and things like that, but they just got the atmospherics of it and uh, just the overall feel of the, uh, of the, uh, of the sets and, uh, I don't know, terrain and landscape was really quite striking. And I was looking through my um, stamps, to, uh, I really wasn't thinking of, a, you know, some little fairy or something like that, in particular a pixie, you know, which is kind of one of the uh, characters of the, uh, well not one character, but many of the characters of the movie. And I found this little pixie in my uh, collection. Um, I have no idea when I got it and don't even recall using it, but it's from the stamp company Abracadata and um, I don't think you'll find that uh, anymore. I forgot, I think it was, uh, uh, I don't even want to say the name of it, but uh, because I'll probably be mistaken, but I don't know, this stamp is probably from the 80s, I'm guessing. And uh, I was testing out the rubber here. Sometimes rubber is, uh, you know, they use different types of rubber out there. I, I use 100% red rubber, and, and I don't think this one's 100%. I think it has a little bit of a chalk uh, mixture in it, and sometimes those, those don't have a, those don't last quite as long um, as the 100% red rubber. But I did a couple test impressions of this, and it seems to be working fine. But anyways, one inch block uh, mount stamp. It looks like they lacquered it themselves, you know, and uh, kind of cut out that really thin piece of rubber and mounted it on this other red rubber cushion. So real handcrafted piece right here. You can even see this lacquer right here is really kind of, you know, discolored, but uh, I don't know. It's, there's something to, uh, you know, there's the convenience of unmounted rubber, which most of us use, it seems, these days. And, you know, there's the beauty of the, uh, you know, the wood mounted, but um, there's some of these old crafted stamps that's kind of really uh, neat, you know, and uh, I always kind of like using them. Uh, brings back memories. Anyways, okay, going back to the scene right here, um, I love the atmospherics of it all, and, uh, you know, in some sequences it's really super bright and airy and uh, plush green with color, but in another segment in the movie, um, 
I don't know what kind of lighting it is in there. I, I guess it's supposed to be nighttime, but um, and uh, there's a another part of the movie where the tone gets really kind of dark. But there's these nighttime sequences where there's always kind of I don't know some moonlight or something like that streaming through the trees, and uh, it gives this real kind of evocative um, I don't know real kind of atmospherically thick feel to it and uh, that's something that I want to try to I wouldn't say capture here but I don't know I want to come up with a scene that kind of is similar in a tone I guess you can say okay I'm using um, this uh, three by four and a half inch stamp. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Suddenly I kind of forgot it. Brookside Boulders, I think. All right, that's stamped once, okay. Now I'm going to, you know, whenever you stamp these stamps, um, if you're using a larger piece of paper, then you have these edges right here. You can use sibling imagery if you want something else there, but if you want to carry that kind of idea out towards the edge of the paper, you can always use um, the stamp with itself, okay? I could stamp it on the same kind of level, or I can kind of change it a little bit. I think I'll do that. And I want to overlap my previous impression a little bit, so I don't have a bunch of spaces in between uh, the imagery. And what I'm going to do is I want to create kind of a little pool here, you know, for this little pixie or fairy to be kind of uh, dancing on the surface of, okay? Okay, now I use that image twice. I think I'm going to use it a third time. I'll just use it for the top portion of it. Uh, let's see. Let's go about right here. Okay. And maybe I'll go for another one out here. Kind of a large scene, but. Um, the tone of it is going to be more of this kind of nighttime, monochromatic, moonlit type of scene or scene lighting. So hopefully, um, this video, I always say this, but these videos always run kind of long on me. But, uh, I always kind of want to keep adding and adding and adding to them. Um, but anyways, uh, hopefully the toning part won't take too long. Um, I, don't know, I don't know, I'll see what comes up as I go along. Okay, now I wanted to make this fairly thick with, uh, I don't know, some kind of vegetation or something like that. And, um, I don't know, that Maleficent, she kind of creates this kind of little spindly kind of fortress of, you know, foliage and thorny, prickly barriers uh, in this landscape. So I wanted to use this one right here, spiny branches, okay. So why don't we use that? I'm trying to think to myself if I want to add that in later. Sometimes I add in these branches and things like that kind of at a later time so that when I tone in a bunch of uh, color or value into the scene, these types of things, little spindly things won't smear. But let's, I want to really, I've got to get this landscape down first so I can I want to get a really a better idea of what this is going to look like and although it'd be a good idea 
to do these videos of mine are really never rehearsed. Um, really, because I'm too kind of lazy to do that, for one. And uh, the second, I just don't have the time to do that. But we'll see how it goes. Okay. Let's try this right here. Okay. Now, for the most part, I don't have too much of this, you know, these spiny branches um, where they're going, you know, they would overlap those rocks very much, but there's still enough. Okay, so there's my little mask. I have a little bit of those rocks showing, kind of see where they're peeking out from behind the mask, paper towel mask. Just so, again, I don't create a bunch of, you know, big white spaces in between the imagery. You want the imagery to kind of merge in with one another. Okay. All right, so we have that. Branches are naturally behind the rocks now, okay. And just to create a little bit of, um, I don't know, kind of balance with this, within the scene, maybe I'll have these, some more branches down here, so we have this kind of repetition of form, or rep not repetition, re repetition of form. And while well, this is, you know, background, this represents foreground, um, maybe the, you know, in theory you can have these branches a little bit larger, but I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference, so, you know. By doing this too, you know, by having that, these forms roughly the same kind of size, um, it kind of pulls the background a little bit in closer, you know, by having this repetition of form kind of a, of a similar um, scale. If I did those really small, there's a smaller version of it too. It would look like the background, you know, it's kind of going back in the distance a little bit um, farther. As I stamped that out, I kind of moved it a little bit, but I don't know, no big deal. Okay, let's go again over here. But this time, I will have those branches, spiny branches, in front of these rocks. So we have this, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a stronger um, feeling of space. And we're kind of sandwiching those rocks in between this uh, image. So we have branches behind the image, in front of it, and back in the background. So what this kind of does is it kind of ties everything together a little bit more, you know, in kind of a stronger uh, fashion. And why don't we do it again? Maybe down here, maybe these branches are coming in from the side. Okay. All right. Now, going back to the movie, um, while there are a lot of things that are kind of prickly and... I don't know. Kind of visually... Um, hard and spiny. That landscape is also, it never gets like totally, um, I don't know, what, what would be the word, oppressive or something like that. And it's still a living space. There's a lot of these little creatures still living about. So, um, let's have some um, branches coming in there with some foliage on them. You know, there were still flowers and whatnot throughout this um, kingdom, so this is the oak branch stamp. All right. Now, I'm not going to create... Um, I'm not going to use a... a uh, an actual 
sky image, like a, a moon or something like that. Um, but I want something to have, I want there to be moonlight kind of pouring into the scene somehow, or from somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to take this stamp right here, and all right, I'm going to have a bunch of branches coming in from the side right here, but I want that moonlight to be, you know, kind of coming in from somewhere out of the scene. So I think on the edge right here of this branch, I think I'm going to wipe off some ink just to kind of, you know, create kind of a little bit of a head start in terms of representational lighting. So maybe these branches are kind of illuminated in one area um, by that light source, okay? So what we have right here, see what it, it's a little bit darker and uh, I hope you can see this, the edges are a little bit more of a, it's a grayed out impression. All right. Now I can do a lot of that with things like, um, you know, pigment ink, but if you can do it, if you can get a head start in some of that by just simply not stamping that ink completely dark right to begin, you know, right off the bat, then why not do it, you know, like that. Save yourself some time later on. And, I don't know, it only took me like 15 years to figure that out. Slow learner. Okay. Wiping off some of this edge right here. So you have this oscillation between um, kind of dark and, I wouldn't say light, but lighter within the image itself. So even though you're, you're stamping out you know, a very monochromatic um, stamp impression. Um, you have these uh, changing values within it, so um, instead of looking very flat, you know, in terms of having the same solid value going across it, 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 it changes it, so it uh, slightly, you're turning the uh, object in space, uh, representationally. By saying, you know, that light is indeed hitting it. It's, it's not a flat object. Or at least, hopefully, that's the way it looks. Okay? So there we go again. Kind of lighter edges. All right, so light is going to be coming from in here. Okay. So anyways, I mean, just those two impressions right now, uh, there. Um, kind of the scene is starting to fill out a little bit. And, hmm. Why not? Let me try something. Let me really, I okay, guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to really wipe off a decent amount so that hopefully I can get an even lighter background impression. Now I could have tried for a, just doing a, a second impression, stamp with the first one, stamp at it again, it's lighter to begin with, but the thing is, this didn't stamp out, you know, perfectly you know, um, in terms of coverage. So some of this might have been inked up, you know, completely where it didn't stamp off, or, you know, like down here or something like that, where it's stamping off the edge of the page. So why not just re-ink it up again? It doesn't take a lot long and really wipe it off and try to control the impression, okay? And let's see how this goes. Okay, I could have it coming up from behind those rocks like that, maybe. Yeah, I'll do that, and I'll have this light coming, kind of coming from that very top portion down here. 
So let's see how it goes. much of it. Um, it's probably just about 25% of the stamp itself. So let's see if I if I took off enough ink or let's see if I took off too much. Who knows? Let's see how that goes. Yeah, okay, not bad. It's kind of a gray tone back there. Alright. So like again, uh I really want to get this filled, you know, this, that area, or not area, but the, uh, the movie, it was just so filled. Let me go for another impression out here. I'll go for that second impression just using the tips of this. Doubt if anything's going to show up at all, but yeah, kind of just gave a little bit of texture right there. some of this in here too. Hmm. Uh, I think I want one more impression. At least. Okay. All right. Let's see. So this is the type of mo uh, moment whenever, uh, you know, if you're demonstrating in front of a, some people at like a convention or something and you don't know how something's going to uh, turn out, it's always kind of nerve wracking. Uh, not terribly nervous, I would say. Maybe it's exciting, you know, you just don't know what it's going to come out to be, but uh, you always kind of feel this kind of collective holding of breath when you're doing something like that, you know, not really knowing how it's going to come out. Um, but that's where the excitement is to do so. Yeah, I miss doing uh, conventions. I haven't really done one in a while. Let's see, a little bit more right around here. I guess I don't want things so prickly, you know, everywhere at least. Now I want there to be some life in there because, you know, the tone wasn't just completely uh, kind of off-putting like it was in the was it Sleeping Beauty, you know. It's kind of an interesting uh, concept, uh, premise for the movie. Um, all right, let's see. I think that looks pretty good. I think I've created, um, enough of a stage in here, um, for, you can see my test prints of that little pixie. I think that's enough of a stage, you know, in terms of the, uh, the larger, uh, components within the scene. And let's get into some of the details here. And, um, and then let's get to kind of fleshing out the scene. All right. Now here's some, I need to get some more tack and peel. It's the, uh, material that you, uh, put on to acrylic blocks so that you can, you know, stamp out cushionless, uh, um, dies. Okay, this is um, called Tiny Rocks. I kind of blotted it first a little bit. I really love this stamp. Just in terms of the uh, textures that you can really create from it. Going for my third impression of it, you know, so I can get mm, different um, different values of it.
by doing that too, by putting those rocks in there sticking out of the water, what you're doing is you're kind of creating a situation where you're saying that that water, you know, really isn't too deep there. Okay. Oops. It really isn't a upside down or something like that to the, these stamps here. Uh, more so with the smaller one, but there is a little bit of depth within that little image right there. I kind of created the larger rocks for the most part, or it's kind of like a like a half an oval, you know, with the flat side representing the bottom of it, kind of where it goes into the water. So anyway, okay. I think anything. <laughs> I put a bunch of uh, different uh, branches right here because, I, like I said, I wasn't really quite sure of uh, huh, what I might want to use. But yeah, let me try one thing. This is uh, kind of this mossy branch right here, Spanish moss. Like I said, I, I do want to, I did want to make this thick with the imagery. Okay, you can just kind of hang, have it creating this where it's hanging kind of into the scene from the top. All right. Okay, actually that looks pretty good. I like that. Kind of that moss represents growth in there, and it's, I don't know. I mean, the scene's going to get kind of, you know, quite a bit darker, but we'll see if it kind of even shows in there. All right, enough. All right, let's get it to uh, some of the uh, impressions. Okay, spoke too soon. Let's do some lilies in here grass within that water. Okay. All right. That is looking kind of crazy now. Crazy good. I hope. Yeah. It might look kind of busy, but let's try to bring some, uh, a little bit more cohesion to this scene and, uh, really, uh, Get some light direction in there. I'm looking for my plastic cover. Oh, here we go. Plastic cover. Tack and peel, be sure and kind of put that plastic cover on here, otherwise, it gets less tacky. If it gets less tacky, just put this under water and kind of uh, rinse off, rub off kind of the old lint on it and let it air dry. Don't dry it with a paper towel or something like that, otherwise, you'll get lint all over it again. You'll have to wash it again. Okay, now, um, let me see, I just cleaned off a bunch of my, um, stylus tools here, I, I guess I didn't clean them all off, I just got a bunch of green on my thumb from this one, but I was thinking maybe on one of the sides where I kind of cleaned off, um, kind of a greener tip, I might actually use that, I might want to of incorporate that into the composition because uh, kind of the grayscale um, tones of uh, certain parts of the movie um, I don't know if it was temperature it didn't look like a neutral gray I thought it was kind of more of a maybe a greenish gray or something like that Okay, now I'm going to start off this scene with a Memento ink. This one's London Fog. Mementos are, while this isn't a super light color like, say, the um, seashell inks, it is a thick ink, so it spreads around pretty well. All right, 
Um, if I want to go with a greenish tinge, I could also go with um, one of the uh, Adirondack lights, um, green, greenish tinge um, colors. I don't know if I want to do that right now. I think I want to just start off with the London fog. And if I want to use some of those lighter tones, I can always go into it, um, you know, at a later time. Actually, this looks pretty good to me. London fog, I don't know. Maybe London fog's a little bit uh, lighter than a uh, than I thought it was. I remember it being. I mean, which is good, right? You know, if you have a lighter tone of kind of a given color family, you know, then why not use that? Okay, now, as I can see, I, th I, I do believe that there is a little bit of a green ink left in my tip here. Uh, on my tips here, I just kind of dabbed them into a paper towel. I didn't put them under, a, like, a running water in the sink or something like that, which, which you could do. Um, you know, because when I'm cleaning these things off, I don't necessarily need them to get, you know, 100%, uh, you know, clean. Quadrant done. Okay. Uh, speaking of that, I tend to work an area. Okay, I'm not trying to work the entire perimeter of the scene or get the whole thing done, you know. What I do is I work a small section, okay? You know, a little two by two inch area at a time. And I really spread that ink around. I, I just have a feeling that, that the ink spreads better that way. So you're, Kind of starting from wet and then you should kind of dab this around it's getting drier and drier and that's when i kind of dab into my scene as opposed to doing this type of thing you know you know so when you do this and work smaller areas you're kind of you know taking advantage of the wet to dry um situation you know dabbing the ink off first and then working it in so if you want these transitions of value, um, by working a smaller section, um, you're really taking advantage of that uh, that aspect of uh, you know kind of a wet to dry tip, all right. So don't try to you know don't rush it. Uh, you know. I think things come about faster this way anyway, because things develop nice and kind of controlled in a controlled way. You don't, you know, we don't have a, a bunch of uh, mishaps with, uh, you know, a, a blob of some tone that you happen to be working with, kind of in a in an area that you didn't want it in. All right. Everything, you know, for the most part, you know, kind of uh, comes about uh, the way you intend it or the way you kind of hope. Now, a lot of it is, you know, like when I'm doing this, I don't know exactly what these things are going to kind of look like, but I would say that it develops in, you know, in a fairly controlled uh, way, you know, where I can kind of manipulate things and change them around if I, you know, if I need to, if something's, you know, if I don't like a certain color, then I just stop using it, but I won't have this big blob of it sitting somewhere in this, in, in, within the scene. Okay, this is where I'm going. I think I talked about this in a previous video, but I have a light area here, okay? And I have an area down here that's going to be light too, but in between um, kind of a light source and reflected light, I create this area of darkness in between there, so we have dark I mean, you know, light, dark light. And up top here, I'm kind of toning it out a little bit too, so it goes dark, light, dark, light, dark, okay? So two areas of light. I always see this as kind of like a little, you know, figure eight, you know, like that, that, you know, where the thing kind of comes in like that. But that's the, uh, kind of the lighting convention that I use on most of my scenes. Sometimes the eight goes like this, you know, two balls of light. Sometimes it goes like 
this, you know, and it changes, you know, where I have kind of light coming in at an angle like that. And sometimes again, you know, there's more, you know, areas of spotlights or whatever, you know, but, but for the most part, you know, that's, I mean, that's kind of the basic structure of the, uh, you know, the lighting scheme within all of my scenes. So it's like you're creating a dialogue between light uh, within there. You can also create dialogue, kind of a visual dialogue between subject matter, you know, a little figure hiking to a cabin or something like that. You know, so you're kind of creating this dialogue between figure and destination, you know, and you're doing it in a visual format. But you can kind of create these little dialogues, uh, you know, with various um, components within the scene. You know, little fishermen, fish jumping out of the water in the foreground, you know, that type of thing. And also, kind of directionally, you know, it just, it, it kind of happens naturally, but you have all these little branches that are kind of, you know, going up in there, you know, the sky like that. So they're all kind of pointing, you know, like this to the light, all right? Or they're pointing into the scene, so we're going to have a little subject matter down here. I haven't forgotten to uh, stamp that little pixie thing out yet, but I'm going to save that for the end. Kind of a big set here, you know, it's like a big stage, um, it's, you know, a set, you know, for a movie or something like that. And, it, you know, with all this stuff going on, it really needs some kind of little figurine or something like that, doesn't it? Okay. Can I see this coming about right now? creating these little streaks across the, the water's surface. It's always easier to turn my card and streak it in like that. Then I can turn it around like this, and put it in like this. I find that better than working like this with my hand. This isn't kind of a natural motion, but this is, you see like that? Same, doing the same thing for the sky. Now, I've colored in a lot of my rocks here, but I've left a little bit of them, you know, a little bit lighter. Things a little lighting. I'm looking at my camera, little screen on the back, and uh, I'm not sure if you can see some of these things, because this gray, like I said again, it's, it's fairly light. I'll show you kind of the lighting scheme will be a little bit more apparent when I... Uh, move on into my uh, next uh, value. Let, let's do that right now. Um, okay, Memento London Fog. Uh, you know, you can switch up, you can go to, uh, if you have uh, different brands of inks, like I said, the Memento is a good one because it's kind of thick, so I don't get, you know, real harsh moon shapes that kind of stick, you know, I mean it did on this because this is just copy paper, but this glossy cardstock, um, stick with a kind of a thicker ink, pick a thick ink from, you know, some company that you like. Um, this is the Marvy, number 12, okay, I have such a thick ink with that memento ink that as I'm tapping this on there, I wasn't quite sure if, uh, this pad was completely dry or if I had any ink on there, but okay, it's starting to show up a little bit more now. There's some ink from the Memento still on here, so when I inked up like that, there probably wasn't very much ink from the, uh, the Marvin getting onto the, uh, the pad here, but I could feel it and I could see it too. It's starting to get a little bit uh, darker on the scene, okay? And again, work in those little areas first. Don't try to rush it and cover the whole thing. Kind of 
really utilize the, uh, the wet to dry aspect of tapping off on the edges and working your way in, because when I work my way in, it gets lighter in here, okay? So I'm using a drier tip when I'm working in there. Don't go in here and, you know, in your lightest areas and start working with a really super wet, you know, pad. In a sense, you're, what you're, do, you're creating on these foam tips here is you're creating an ink pad on the tip itself. You know, that tip there becomes basically an ink pad, you know, a very small ink pad. So you wouldn't want to just take a ink pad and start working right in there, right? Okay. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna do it on this, but um, in that movie, again, Maleficent, um, it's kind of really interesting. It reminds me of that movie Brave, the animated movie. Uh, speaking of all these uh, different movies here, um, these little, I don't know what they were, these little sprites, these glowing sprites, you know, were in that movie. And uh, Maleficent, I mean, it's not really said what these things are, but these are really glowing kind of, they're all like fireflies or something like that, but instead of a, uh, little kind of greenish lights. They were kind of, uh, I would say they were kind of a pinkish tone. It's all lights that were kind of, I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put some, some something like that in here. Um, in one of the previous videos I did uh, kind of something, attempted uh, to do something like a fireflies. I don't know how successful that was, but uh, We'll have to try to do something in here. I think it's going to need something like that because, you know, I've been just having that one little pixie thing in there. Is, I don't think it's going to be enough in terms of trying, kind of adding in this kind of whimsical element. Okay, now, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm not really adding this gray anywhere where I didn't add the gray with the memento pad, okay? So that first color, um, not just in this scene, but kind of in any scenes that you do, if you're kind of doing this process right here, um, those first colors are really the most important because they kind of establish the, the lighting scheme of a scene and the lighting direction. Where's that light coming from and where's the light reflecting off, you know, what objects, all right? And you don't have to have kind of a really strong sense of lighting. Okay, this is, I don't. Um, you know, where is that supposed to go? I mean, as you can see in here, it's light. It's kind of lighter in here a little bit. You know, I, you know, toned out a lot of those rocks, but some of those rocks were, still had a little bit of light on them, so I'm, I'm leaving them light, all right? So often, you know, when it comes to kind of lighting choices, it's, it's just more, you know, a lot of it is just about restraint. You know, when you get into your darker tones, just stop uh, toning out something. You know, if something, if there was a rock over here that was lighter, I mean, and if you just left it light, it wouldn't look wrong. It would just be that that's just happens to be where, you know, kind of light is creeping in from, you know, some branches somewhere, you know, behind some branch or it's, you know, still being illuminated in that kind of little section, okay? You know, and going back to movies, um, you know, when I thought about doing um, kind of this scene right here, kind of inspired by, you know, that art direction in there, I would, you know, when I, when I really think about it, um, whenever I'm doing these scenes, I'm, for me, I think I'm kind of the end goal is probably something a little bit more, um, you know, movie, set, animated or whatnot, you know, kind of oriented than in, say, trying to replicate, you know, some kind of scenic photograph, you know. And when you really think about it, though, you know, when it comes to movie sets, Lord of the Rings or something like that, you think of these 
amazing landscapes. Now, a lot of that was filmed in, you know, New Zealand, of course, you know, when you see these grand sweeping vistas, but when they get into kind of smaller intimate areas, you know, those are often sets that have been built and, you know, meticulously constructed, you know, you know, the director wants a little bit more foliage here, you know, put a little bit more foliage there, you know, make that greener, put more flowers there, you know, and that's kind of what you're doing when you're doing, you know, scenic stamping, you're really, you know, you're the set director, you're the lighting director, right, within your own kind of world, you can get something, you know, Um, to your own liking, your own aesthetics, etc. All right, now let's see if we can see this. See, it's getting darker, so you can really see kind of my lighting in here and see within here. You know, just not going over those rocks with my darker tone. We kind of create this little passage of light right there. This oscillation between darks and lights. Same thing down here. It's darker on the edge. Right. Okay, that's looking pretty good, but let's bring it together even more. Now let's move back to our black. All right. I'm using the same pad right here because I want to transition into that value, that ink, using some of the existing color, you know, tone that was already from my previous ink. Okay, so it'll be a much, you know, smoother transition as a result. Now. When I did my, one of the previous videos I did was um, stamp sketching. I really added quite a bit of black ink to this because I knew I was going to be stamping out a lot of just compositions. So uh, this pad is fairly juicy, so I'm going to really spend a lot more time on the edges of the card before I take that color in. All right. If you're using kind of a, you know, drier black pad, then just you know, tone accordingly. You can move into your scene a little bit quicker because, you know, your pad isn't so wet, you know, and thus your tip isn't so wet. And remember when you move into your darkest tones, especially this is not the time when we want to see something like that right in the middle here, okay? So, not good in there. So kind of stay out of that area, you know, um, if possible, unless you want to get into that area with a very dry, you know, tip after you tapped it out a bit. How wet is it? Well, sometimes it's hard to say because this paper is so wet, you know, and saturated with a lot of the ink that we've been using so far. So just test it, you know, on a piece of blotter paper, okay? And that's fairly dry right now, so I can kind of come into this area if I want to add a little bit more tone within there. You know, add a little bit of a kind of atmospheric swipes across there like that, you know. Create those little streaky areas and kind of come into it this way a little bit too. Re-inked. Start off again on the outside, okay? this on previous videos, but kind of doing these monochromatics like this, I wouldn't always just see this as kind of a monochromatic um, kind of destination. When you use these monochromatics like this, and when you're going kind of, um, you're kind of using color, temperature, intensity, hue, kind of in a very minimal way. I have a little bit of green in here. But when you do that, um, I think it 
kind of strengthens. It's like an exercise, and you're kind of exercising your um, use of value, okay? Light and dark, value in terms of light and dark. So that when you do go back to your color work, I think your color work as a result becomes stronger because you're really in tune with that, you know, the concept of value. And the concept of value, you know, is really important, you know, when it comes to um, kind of scenic stamping because value, lights and darks um, kind of control, well, I don't know if that's the word, control, um, they direct um, light, lighting within a scene, okay? And like I said, my use of lighting is really quite, it's very, very basic. You know, it's, it's very simple. Um, like I said, it's often light, dark, light somewhere. All right. And I have little, you know, spatterings of light here and there, you know, over other things. But there's usually kind of, you know, a couple, you know, strong areas of it, you know, and usually one of it is uh, um, light, a light source, and the other area is the main area of reflected light, <laughs> you know, and, you know, to kind of illustrate or kind of explain how, you know, this in another kind of simplified fashion is just make your edges darker and lighter in the middle, you know. Just keep it lighter in the middle. How do you do that? Don't bring in your darker tones into it. Just bring maybe your first one or two colors into that area, which are typically uh, when I say colors, I mean your, you know, first one or two values, I guess, would be a better kind of description of it. Okay. Now this is really starting to come together now. <laughs> I say that in after all this time, but, you know, the edges are starting to get, you know, get so dark, they're starting to turn to black, and look how great that looks right there on the, on the corners, right there. See how those kind of, you know, pushes back the, uh, the imagery in the distance a little bit visually and it kind of ties things together you know on the edges of the, of the card you know these all this busy imagery just t kind of tends to you know merge into one on the edges As I'm tapping this, it's building up a little bit more color. I find, you know, when I'm wiping, it's not adding quite as much tone, you know, because this page is fairly wet right now. It's not super wet. I mean, I can touch this, and it's not like, you know, I'm going to leave a bunch of ink on my hand or something like that, but I just mean it's moist. It's very moist, you know, the, the coating on this paper is... Uh, you know, it's starting to reach, if it hasn't already, kind of a super saturation where it's just not going to take any more ink. All right, all that time, boy. I've almost forgot about that little pixie myself. I wonder if you, you know, everyone else has. Okay. Hmm. Mm, now would be a really bad time to kind of drop this. Okay, now this this isn't a Stampscapes image. Like I said, it's a Abracadata. I have to practice with this a little bit now. You know, now is not the time to do this. 
it, well, I don't know, I pressed really hard and I didn't get a squashed image, but I thought maybe if I put too much pressure down on the, her leg, that one little thin area would, it wouldn't impress well, but sometimes, like this is where the most of the mass is, so I'm going to put my finger kind of on that area. I'm going to have to get the best impression. Okay, that looks pretty good. So press harder on the top. Yeah, that looks good. Where am I going to put her? Naturally, I'm going to put her right in the spotlight here. Okay. Okay. Now is not the time to, uh, you know, start stamping this out and suddenly, you know, I didn't press hard enough in one area and, you know, headless pixie or something like that. Okay. Pretty good. Now I'm not going to tone that little character in with, uh, um, you know, the stylus tool or something like that. That's going to have to be addressed with the, uh, you know, one of these pens, like an alcohol pen or something like that with a, you know, finer tip. But let's get, okay, I'm not going to do anything around her right now because I know she's wet. You know, ink. So, um, let's get to some of the other, um, things that I'm going to do on in here. Let's try to do... Uh, what do I want to do? I want to put in some more atmosphere. Let's do that with our color box. Pigment ink, frost white color box, as opposed to using something like a brilliant pigment ink that dries very quickly. I love brilliance ink, you know. But for this purpose, I want a slow drying ink when it comes to glossy cardstock. So I'll go with just the straight, slow drying pigment ink here. And let me see if I can kind of bring this in a little bit lower. So this is where I always get in trouble. I always, uh, start doing these detailed areas, then suddenly you know, I start adding that in that I, on my table right here. I kind of forget all about that I'm filming. I'm doing it, everything out here. Okay, but I'll try to remember. Okay. Remember what I said about kind of getting that head start in terms of wiping off some of the, uh, you know, the ink off of the uh, tips right here? And it's, this is the reason right here, because as I'm doing this, I'm you know, I want that light to be coming in from the background right here. So just having them in, you know, this impression's inherently lighter to begin with. You know, it saves me a little bit of time here in this process. Sometimes when you add in this uh, pigment too, and if you spray seal your um, your scenes, you know, to, kind of enhance the uh, intensity of the inks, the background inks. Sometimes you lose a little bit of, uh, you know, the effects of uh, the pigment ink. Oops. Because that comes in it, I don't know. If you've ever sprayed, like, pastels or chalks with a spray sealant, you'll find that, oh my gosh, you know, what happened to all my little highlights and, you know, kind of finer detailed work with those chalks? Uh, the same thing kind of happens with the, the pigment ink like this sometimes, you know, this kind of dries kind of like a chalky surface. And you can lose some of that. So if you just have kind of inherently some kind of lighter imagery, then they won't be uh, subject to that type of uh, um, I don't know what's happening, kind of the absorption into the uh, um, spray sealant, I guess. I don't know. It turns it from, it turns it less translucent. You know, that spray sealant kind of makes the, uh, the little 
pigment, be it chalks or whatever, it kind of makes it a little bit more transparent. like something see I mean I like that in there but just to show you okay see that little branch back there that's lighter if you ever don't like anything you can always just rub it off and see it's dark again right um, but I did like it so let's add that back in See how I'm kind of adding this in, you know, a small little area here again. I'm not trying to do a, the whole thing. I just I wouldn't have control over it that way. I'm just kind of working one little area at a time, one little object at a time. Uh, my tip is not, you know, real super um, wet with a lot of pigment ink. It's kind of a little bit more precarious when you're using a brand new. Uh, pigment ink pad, but mine is several years old, you know, not dried out at all, but just at the right consistency. This, I mean, it, it can leave a big blob too, but, you know, I'm kind of adding this in the lighter areas, so that big blob really doesn't show up as much, but like I said, if if you ever get too much on there, just wipe it off. Okay, so we have that kind of moonlight creeping in. Things are a little bit more... I don't know, it's, it, it's kind of more... atmospheric, you know, the air, you're kind of more aware of things like the air. You know, you can touch it. You know, it's kind of kinesthetic, it's visual, but it kind of represents this um, atmosphere that's thicker, you know, it's all-encompassing, you know, we can feel the uh, surrounding area. And that's where I like adding these types of details. I mean, I say that all the time, but like I said, uh, you know, this could be someone's first video they've seen of, you know, you know, the creation of these images, so, but anyways, um, adding this in up top, and adding this on the water surface, now it represents kind of reflected light, right? That moonlight coming through mist or something like that, illuminated mist, and it's also doing that down here, it's on the water surface, so you're kind of creating a similar texture down below. And so it's kind of creating a little bit of continuity. Okay. Let's pull it back a little bit here. As far as my thoughts go, uh, I really like how this scene's coming coming out. I, I really didn't have any idea of uh, how it would look. It, mostly in the composition part, I I know I wanted to make things really thick with uh, imagery, and I wasn't. I just wasn't quite sure if I had to, you know, if I'd make it too busy looking, you know, with all these branches. You know, as it turns out, I didn't use every branch that I've kind of pulled out of my collection, you know, with the idea of using it on this scene, but um, uh, just keeping the composition fairly simple, you know, I mean, it was just uh, that one, it was really that one rock stamp, just put, you know, with a bunch of, uh, you know, the boulders, with just a bunch of branches basically around it and throughout it, okay? Uh, 
Okay, let's create some of this mess down here as well. I'll put some of the water in front of some of these rocks that we stamped out, those uh, tiny rock textures, okay? So kind of subdues some of them. Some of them are already kind of, uh, you know, um, stamped out lighter to begin with so that I don't have to use so much of this pigment ink on here, you know, to kind of dampen them down. I mean, those rocks are really small, but, you know, when you put, you know, some of this pigment ink over in front of some and, you know, not others, it gives, you know, you know, kind of a three-dimensional feel, even to kind of smaller details like that. What you have is, you know, some of them are reflecting some light and some of them aren't. And kind of what's going through my mind right now is I'm kind of wondering what color I should, you know, color that little dress. And I, I want to have her, you know, create this kind of connection between you know, the little pixie in that little area down below, so I, I think I'll use a pen and create like a, some sort of a shadow underneath here where she's just kind of touching the water. Maybe, I don't know. Or, you know, it actually sparkles down there would be better. Okay. All right, let's go in and Create some little highlights in here, okay? All right. All right, let me show you this right now. Okay, this scene right here, I think there's a lot of life in this scene, you know, in terms of just shading and values, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly rich with tone, okay? But, Okay, here's a little kind of preview. Okay, I've just put a few little dots in there. Okay, let me do this. Why don't I do? Why don't I do one half of the scene right here? I don't know, up here, and I'll leave that blank. But just putting in, you know, a few little highlights here and there. Okay, just a few um, here and there, and less kind of highlights in the darkness, okay? The darker areas. More in the lights. You know, not a ton or anything, but... See what those little highlights do like that? Okay, you have it over here. I mean, this looks okay, but I think this looks just better right in here. It's little twinkly, little sparkly lights. Um, I do it on the other side. I'm putting them, kind of placing a few little dots around some branches. I, you know, I kind of cluster them a little bit. Got a few little more here and there. Uh, these little dots too, I mean, if you ever put some down and kind of hold it out at arm's distance and you don't like them, just take a paper towel and just rub them right off. They'll buff right off. You don't have to worry about um, rubbing off your ink or anything like that. I mean, it might rub off some of the pigment ink, you know, so, but, um, but not, you know, your tones and colors. Okay. So putting some of those highlights on those branches, see how it's kind of bringing it to life a little bit. You're adding kind of little sparkly highlights. So I'll put some of these rocks, kind of in the lighter areas of the rocks. Maybe I'll put some, a few more highlights here and there. It's, it's very subtle when you put white against something very light. In this case, it was that Memento London Fog, which is a, 
kind of a light value to begin with, so. Okay. There it is on these rocks. I don't even know if you can see them right in here. Down here. A few little dots right up top. There and there. Some of these branches really kind of disappear in the background too. We're just a couple little defining highlights. Kind of pull them out from the background. Um, a little bit more. Kind of uh, what you're doing is you're kind of creating space between that branch and the background. That one down there. See this branch right over here? It really disappears in the background. Uh, not that that's bad either. Maybe I can put a few little highlights here. Kind of where the, you know, the branch comes kind of from the side. And maybe we won't put any highlights, you know, where it moves into, into the darkness here. So maybe you have this kind of moving into the darkness, but where it kind of moves out of the darkness into this lighter area, then we can put a few highlights like that. See that? And that works. Okay. Um, putting this on water. Uh, <laughs> I read this little blurb for a Cenobine for uh, the crafts Damper Magazine, uh, United Kingdom uh, publication, and in my uh, kind of little blurb I wrote, uh, you know, these little white dots here kind of represent specular lighting, and uh, uh, someone editing my probably you know my sloppy grammar and spelling anyway, but uh, but they did change. Um, specular to spectacular. So it says, you know, you can kind of add these dots which represent spectacular lighting. And I would never say that. <laughs> but specular light, um, it's typically, like in photography, it's, that's a word, by the way. And what it means is specular light is light that's brighter than white. So it's typically like a little you know, reflection, you know, a little glaring reflection, you know, a little sparkle, like in the water, like when you look across a body of water. Or if you look on really anything, probably where you're sitting right now, if you look at your table or desk, you know, if I put this little pen down here, you know, that little, see that little glare right there? It's the reflection of that light shining on that, and that would represent the kind of specular light, you know. This is light, you know, right there. That's brighter. All right, my battery ran out, ran out there. So anyways, a quick battery change there. But what I was saying was just specular light, you know, light that's brighter than white. And, uh, you know, without it, um, I think we lose a little bit of the life, you know, uh, you know, the uh, kind of little twinkly life that we can kind of introduce in, um, you know, whatever areas we choose to uh, utilize it. Okay, so adding that in. All right, let me give you a quick tour through some of these old dots right there. You can see it right there again, where I first started using it up there. Uh, sometimes we just add too. Sometimes it's just too much too. You know, like right there. Maybe that shows up too much there. Maybe I might be able to subdue it a little bit. Uh, let me see. Let's put a little bit of a color box in front of that branch right there. Okay. Give it some more atmospheric touches. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking about that movie that I was talking about. I saw that movie twice. I might have to check it out. Nah, I don't know if I'm going to check it out a third time. 
let's buy the uh, DVD. But um, anyway, okay. So see that I added some more pigment right there, so those dots don't kind of stand out so much. Um, okay, there's a few, quite a few in these rocks right here. It's less apparent because the rocks are kind of lighter to begin with. So that branch right there, how it really comes out in the background. Moving down here. Kind of cross right there. Um, by the way, this pen is a Uniball Signo pen. And you can get these from a lot of different places, you know. I always recommend try your local rubber stamp retailer first, but uh, if they don't have them, um, you can get them from several online sources. Uh, pretty good source for all things pens. And this is not from doing a lot of research, but I just happened to get them years and years and years ago. Um, was from Jet Pens, J E T Pens dot com. All right. Okay. All right. Let me try something here. Um, this is a Sharpie paint pen, water-based pen. And a friend of mine was doing something with that painting that he had been working on and uh, all these white marks with his Sharpie paint pen, he said, and I thought, oh, okay, so Sharpie has this kind of get into something, you know, these new things, and I kind of figured what they were, but I know they make, like, different types of pens, too, but this one reminds me of the, uh, I think it was an Ochita white paint pen, you know, that we used to use, you know, in terms of the focus in here. It's that little tip right there. What you do is de you depress the tip, okay? Don't go boom, 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 boom on it, okay? So this little tip kind of gets pressed in. You can depress it um, right here. There's a spring in there, so it presses down, okay? But don't, you know, just constantly pound it down. Just press it down kind of to get it flowing, okay, a little bit. And just take it back up and shake it. Let's see if we can get that out. Yeah, I think it's come out, okay. And you have this little kind of fine line. And these things come in all kinds of colors, but I picked out this pastel one. Actually, the, these pastels would have been perfect for a couple of the scenes I was doing. Uh, before, but um, um, you know, with flowers, like wildflowers, I'll have to try it out. But, anyways, I thought we'd go in on a scene like this and kind of it, that light, you know, this image right here, these rocks are called, you know, um, boulders. With, boulders with the lichen? Is that it? Brookside boulders, okay, but that kind of texture on the surface of them is supposed to be lichen. So I thought I'd just add, I don't want a bunch of little green dots everywhere, but it's just kind of a, that value of green right there, where there's that same kind of similar value in here. Um, I thought I'd add a few little of these little details like that. So it's not something that's really so apparent, um, but if someone was to were to look at this card close up, you know, there would be this one little, you know, 
additional um, detail of the card that might be a kind of a fun accent on there. Okay. So here we go. See those little green dots? You can see them, you know, quite easily. But I mean, you know, when you look at the card as a whole, you know, it's not really apparent. Okay, now this is, you know, I mean, this is a video right here, and, you know, we're looking at it at a screen, but, you know, when I'm holding this card at it, arm's distance and looking at it, you know, probably from about a foot and a half, two feet away, well, not two feet, about a foot and a half, um, it really isn't so apparent. Um, but, again, it's just one of those other details. Um, let me see, as I look at this, I'm looking down here in the water, too. So there's little dots down there. I can kind of add in some additional ones. It kind of mimics the, uh, the rocks or the lily grass, you know, the lilies down there. But it just happens to be in a color that relates kind of to the, uh, the color theme of this um, scene. Maybe some of these kind of down here, I'll make these little things a little bit larger. Yeah. All right. So. Let's try some different tones on here. You know, I think for the dress, I, I could go green, but I thought she'd kind of just blend in with the background too much. Let's not do that. Let's go with something. Like purple and green tend to go well together, you know, in terms of, you know, color harmony. But let's pick out the right one. You know, I want her to stand out. But I don't want her to look like, you know, like she doesn't belong in the scene either. Um, hmm. I want some, I think I might want something in between these two colors. Whatever they are. Uh, let's see if I even have anything. By the way, my, these pens look like this, you know, this little case and some Marvy Le Plume permanents. Okay, these are alcohol based. And I'll look at maybe this one right here. Hmm, that's going to be too dark. Let's go with this lighter one here, okay? Definitely not a most definitely not a good place for um you know like a stylus tool or something like that. Okay. All right, now that's one value right there. So we do need to, even though she's just a tiny little detail. She's no doubt going to be the, uh, this little star of the scene, so we want to kind of model, you know, the, the values on her a little bit, you know, so that little dress shouldn't be just like one value of kind of that violet or pink, I guess. So I'm going to add in some different values here. Okay. Add a little bit of warmth. 
warmth to the skin tone as well. Sometimes you get um, little stamps like this, and um, the stamps, in my opinion, that kind of blend in with the uh, Stamscapes are naturally the best are the the ones that contain a lot of detail, so they already have inherent um, shading going on. All right, as opposed to outlines. Now this is an outline stamp, so um, I kind of have to when I do this, I go in and I have to kind of introduce my own kind of modeling of form. You know, meaning adding some shade, you know, light and shade and value into the imagery, and that helps it to merge on. Because Stamscapes, everything's very tonal, you know, you get this, you know, hopefully this rounding form. And uh, outline stamps are just outlines. There's there's no there's no value um, in them in them. So you can have to add that in there. All right, now this is gray. I'm gonna see how that works right here. Okay. Um, not too bad. Now, if you've ever used kind of Copic markers or other alcohol-based markers or alcohol pads, you know that kind of when you add alcohol to alcohol, sometimes it just doesn't build up. It kind of dissolves what you have underneath there, so that's kind of what's happening. Okay, now this is a um, gray. Actually, it's, it's a little bit more neutral. As I look at it on my camera screen, it looks like a warmer gray, but it's really more neutral. Okay, now let's, I'm gonna put um, kind of a shadow down here, you know, being created by this little fairy, and I'll kind of blend it in with the surrounding area a little bit. You see that right area down there? Okay. Let's see if I can build up a little bit more. Maybe in some of these areas, these rocks down here, I'll add a little bit of a shadow to them. These rocks down here, kind of created by the moonlight. You know, it's kind of a greenish tinge in here. I'll add a little bit of a green shadows to some of these rocks. And we'll also do that for her the shadow that she's creating. See that right there? Uh, that's that's not enough for me. It doesn't look right um, in terms of uh, in terms of the effect um, that I want. She looks kind of unspectacular. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with, um, you know, my white pen. I haven't even used this one yet. Okay. And let's create, let's see, this is going to be crazy. Um, see on her dress, let's... Let's do something. Let's add some pattern to her dress. Little polka dots, you know. Like that. Kind of... Creates a little bit of a relationship with the background, right? See that? Got those dots on there. So that when you look at it like this, you 
kind of ties it in a little bit more. Um, now, she has something in her hair. I mean, this is a really tiny little thing, but let's bring that out a little bit. Uh, I'll put these little dots in her hair. See that? And let's see something. Let's how about around her uh, little top. Maybe I can kind of create something where she has like these little jewels or something like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Like that. I did those right there on the dress. Okay, but now let's bring in some little pixie magic or whatever. I should try to create some kind of... I don't want her to be Tinkerbell or something like that. I thought that would be bad, but... Um, let's do something where... I've kind of done this before. Let's... You know what? She's pink here. Let me... Let me do something here. Okay, now, I think, is this the one? I think I use this. Yeah, I already got this one flowing. She's pink, all right? So let's do something. Let's have her influence kind of her surrounding area, all right? Where these little pink little, I'm gonna have these glowing here. Um, let's have it where she's kind of, you know, kind of represents her kind of uh, influence and influencing the environment, bringing this kind of this glowing light. Orbs or something. into the scene, kind of bring in her magic. I'll kind of create these larger ones off, oops, I'm sorry. Create these larger ones off to the side, kind of smaller around her as they get closer. Yeah, you know, we'll have a larger one, like, you know, somewhere down here. So it looks like it's emanating from, uh, you know, this little figurine, this little, uh, entity. Okay, that's better. Pink, kind of amongst the green. So anyways, here we go, you know, going again with that idea of this um, kind of dialogue being created by uh, certain things. Here we have this entity here and it's kind of creating a dialogue between a kind of in a sense she's the light source and you know we have the light actually physically going out into space see Maleficent again. I'm thinking about those little glowing orbs kind of within that landscape. Okay, can you see that now? Those little pink orbs. I need one down here, don't I? Let's do a small one. Or a couple small ones. Okay. So that pink 
Pink and Green. Actually, that'd be a good title for this piece, huh? One of the, uh, the biggest questions I've had over the years is, uh, you know, when you're... I don't know if it's a question as much as a comment, you know, from people that do scenic stamping or... I don't know if it's with other cards, you know, but I, I guess there's something especially true with scenic stamping. It's like, I don't know when I'm done, you know, or I don't know when to stop or something like that. And, um... And I definitely hear them, um, you know, I'm kind of thinking about that myself, you know, at a certain point with this, especially those little pink little dots or something like that, but I always say, you know, if you don't know, <laughs> just overdo it, um, you know, in some ways, because uh, I always think it's better to kind of overdo something. Uh, especially if you're new to scenic stamping or something like that, but um, just overdo it because then you'll know, you know, in the future, you know, of um, you'll you'll get you'll get a better feel of it, you know, when to stop. Now, when it comes to something like this, if there's these little dots, if I don't like them, again, you can just take a paper towel and just buff them right off, okay? Because they kind of sit... Well, okay, I'm saying that, but I don't know as much about these paint pens as I do about the gel pens. The gel pens will rub right off, but... Um, but, you know, go past, uh, you know, maybe the point of ideal, you know, that's always better than kind of always kind of putting on the brakes. It's like putting on the brakes and you're always kind of, you know, preventing yourself from going along, but just go along and, uh, you know, it's always better to kind of go past the, uh, maybe what might have been the ideal stopping point than to kind of never achieve, you know, that um, uh, I don't know what's the word, that, um, resolution, okay, um, that state of completion, I guess, you might have went past it, but you did maximize, I think, something. All right, now I'm going on with that pigment, and uh, I'm making some of these little balls, um, of light, uh, glow, little bit more. I don't think I, you know, looking at this, I think if I did this little glowing, little surrounding area on all of them, I, I just think it would, I get a feeling it would be too much, you know, speaking of going overboard. So we'll have some of these little glowing balls of a uh, light illuminated and kind of glowing, and we'll have some of them are just more of a straight little dot, okay? Maybe some of these larger ones, I, I might need to kind of put a little bit of a glowing element around them because after all, they are supposed to be like closer to our eye, you know, and thus, you know, right in front of our face, closer to our face. So maybe they would uh, kind of be glowing a little bit more. And why I'm doing so many of these, so many of these uh, little elements of glowing orbs, you know, suddenly in my uh, these lessons, I don't know. I need, I've, I think I need one more right here. Let's go. Pen. I should put it away, but okay, let's do that. Okay, let me let those set up for a little bit. Let me go off and do some around here first. Oh, too much ink right there. So let's just wipe it right on off. Okay. There must have been a really wet area of my uh, 
pigment ink pad. Okay. I don't know. I think this scene's come to life a little bit more. Um, with this uh, element. It's kind of the element, it's kind of what it needed though, right? Don't you think? Um, especially this little figure down here. some of these little glowing orbs of light around her. It's not quite as apparent, you know, when you look at it, though, because um, the area around her is very light. Okay, let's put a little bit of atmosphere around her like she's kind of dancing in the mist a little bit, too. My shadow that I created under her feet weren't the greatest. I mean, I wasn't the greatest. So I'll kind of subdue that a little bit. Okay, there's a big dot up there. If you notice, I flipped my card upside down so I can access these little dots easier, you know, from the top portion. I say that because if I put my hand on the card and I start doing this, you know, that sometimes the pigment ink comes off of those ones. I don't know, that area you know, has really kind of been brought to life, I think. I keep saying that here because I really think that did the trick. Well, I like the scene before, but I, I like it a lot more now. Or, or even more. All right, perhaps enough is enough. All right, pink and green. Little glowing orbs, pinkish. They, uh, I changed the uh, the white balance of my camera and also the uh, the exposure compensation. I mean, because I want these videos, I don't want these videos to be real dark. Um, I'm saying that because I think that um, the colors on here in my video screen, these little orbs are slightly more pink than what I believe I'm seeing on the camera, so I'm not really quite sure, but. Anyways, um, finished scene right here. There's our little subject matter in there, really kind of a, you know, um, affecting her environment there. These little glowing orbs, monochromatic background, a lot of atmosphere, dabbing off some ink off of your surrounding areas to give them a little bit more of a, a depth in terms of light and dark, and also kind of create a situation where you don't have to go in and add too much kind of atmospheric effects after the fact. It just simply stamped lighter to begin with, okay? Light, dark light down here, light source, reflected light. So what that is, is kind of like a little spotlight on there for our subject matter. Okay. Whatever color I would have done her little dress in to kind of bring her out from the background, that's the color that I thought would be should be used in the surrounding area there. A lot of pigment ink in here and uh, a lot of um, highlighted, highlighted dots. I'll have to see if I have some little pink um, matte paper that I could put around this and uh, 
kind of uh, finish off the, uh, the card. It's a big one. Again, this is a half page scene. Uh, five and a half by eight and a half. And um, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it.